Hey guys, it's Ed Bird, and I'm back discussing which shoe I should utilize for the Blackmore Vale Half Marathon. So, very recently a viewer, Luis Ferro from Portugal, I hope I've said your name correctly, Luis, got a hold of me and he asked me which shoe should he utilize for his upcoming half marathon. Now I've got a multitude of different shoes that I could use here and that question kind of got me thinking, you know, which shoe am I gonna utilize for the Blackmore Vale half? Which shoe am I gonna utilize for the Oval half? I simply don't know, I just can't decide. So I'm asking you, the viewers, to help me out. Please post down below in the comments which one you think I should utilize. Do watch the race recap kind of thing back from the Blackmore Vale half, uh, my recent race plan video. Uh, that should fill you in on the terrain and the expected elevation and descent of the course. So that race is creeping up like a hungry cat waiting to pounce on its prey. So apart from a small section on grass, this half marathon is predominantly on country roads. It's quite an undulating course. And we're gonna be going up some hills, back down those hills. I think the main ascent is right up to about the midway point of the course, after which there's lots of sort of ups and downs, uh, if my memory recalls it correctly. Although I do remember from that race last year, seeing some deer racing through the snow-covered fields. Oh, perhaps I was just losing it. So no major traction issues to consider here unless of course we have some bad weather as we did last year at the Blackmore Vale half. It got cut short by about a mile I think, maybe it was slightly less than a mile uh, as there was lots and lots of ice on some of the initial sections of the course. It seemed to be round the start really in the end, so they had to uh, reposition where the start was going to be and of course uh, that was a bit of a bummer for a few people who were perhaps racing for points or whatever for their club. So what are the options? Let's get to it. First up is the Adios 4 from Adidas. I think this has got to be a contender really. Just in hand even, just throwing it up and down here, I can feel just how light this shoe is. I've been enjoying doing some faster paced training in this one of recent time. I think it's probably reasonably cushioned enough for a half marathon distance. Some people don't really like this shoe for anything over that, although that aside, everybody's different. I'm quite a light runner, so I don't really feel the lack of cushion that much. I think it's a great fitting shoe. I got this one uh, true to size in a UK size 11, but it doesn't really feel too restrictive or constrictive over your foot. Lots and lots of eyelets here on the Adios 4, so you can tailor it to get a really nice kind of customized lockdown across the forefoot. That tongue's kind of attached in around the very top of the shoe, um, near to the eyelets and I really like the feel of it over the top of the forefoot it does really feel like you've got a nice lock it doesn't feel like it's going anywhere the last thing you want to be doing is messing around with laces and stuff once you've started racing there's nothing worse than when you've got that nagging pain you know something's kind of come loose or things aren't quite right you feel if you stop well you've kind of blown your chance of perhaps getting towards a great time on that race I don't have an awful lot of miles in these so far, so I'm not really worried about in durability or the degradation of the cushion in the midsole. I think I've done about 50 miles in these maybe, so certainly race contenders. Yeah, I just had a quick double check. I tend to use Strava to calculate how much I've used a shoe, and I got about 45 miles in this, so certainly a contender, very little wear on them. That heel to toe drop of about 10 mil, on this one really does promote a very speedy turnover of the legs. It's very, very comfortable on foot and I've observed absolutely no rubbing, discomfort, anything like that in any of my runs in it thus far. So that pretty much sums up the Adios 4. Next up is this great looking shoe, the Gakuso Vaporfly 4%. Again, this shoe's got about 50 miles of use into it so far. There's lots and lots of cushion left in that midsole. I did utilize this one in terms of racing in June of last year for the Heron Half Marathon, which starts off in Yeovilton, near to the town of Yeovil. I achieved a PB of one hour, 34 minutes and 39 seconds. So I've got lots of experience racing in the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, a little bit of experience racing in this shoe. Certainly there are a few slight differences. There's a slightly more pronounced and solid heel counter area here. And to me, 
the actual fly knit seems a little bit more supple. It seems a little bit softer, a little bit more forgiving. I think you know you've reached sad territory where you can feel the difference in the fly knit. It definitely feels different. So certainly a shoe I do need to consider for this race. So higher paces have always felt good to me in the Vaporfly 4% fly knit. And when I examined Strava's grade adjusted pace of last year's effort in the 4% fly knit, not the Gakuso edition, I'm confident that I can reach those target race paces in this shoe without too much trouble. Obviously that target pace is around six minutes 50 per mile. That would get me in under one hour 30. If I can just get a little closer to that one hour 30 at the moment, I would be really, really pleased. As I say, I used the Crimson version, the 4% uh, fly knit in last year's iteration of this race. And I found traction was pretty good in the main. There were a few icy patches where I had to be a little bit careful, but I think traction was reasonable, perhaps ample, um, on those areas. Rest of the time it was fantastic. Another shoe that does need to be considered for this race is the Vaporfly Next Percent. So I've got the Ekaden edition of the Next Percent sat here waiting to be put into action like an unused cog. So I ran well in the green edition of the Next Percent back in September at the Salisbury Half Marathon. I had very little issues uh, with that shoe whatsoever. I've been training in it too of recent time and it's been really great, really fantastic. Left my legs feeling really good the next day. We know this shoe, it's light, it's nimble, traction is improved and certainly durability seems to be improved. In the wet weather in Salisbury back in September, it did perform really well. Traction was no issue there at all. The vapor weave seemed to work well. I experienced very little water kind of sticking around inside the shoe, despite my feet getting quite wet on that day. It's highly likely that there could be some inclement weather at the Blackmore Vale Half Marathon. Hopefully it won't be like last year. Maybe I'd accept a little rain this time around rather than some of that ice. Of course, I did go a half size up in this version of the Next Percent in comparison to the others, but I feel I really need to get a long run in with these shoes just to kind of prove their credentials for this race. I think you need to test any shoe out on a longer distance run before it can be considered for use within a race of that length. I do have time for that this week, but it does need to be this week so that I can get a smaller, shorter taper in next week before the race. So expect a long run at some point this week. Watch out for it on Strava in the Nike Vaporfly Next Percent Ekaden. Another option is the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. This is a shoe I used a lot over the summer in July and August, but very infrequently since then. It's got a very comfortable upper, ample cushioning, and of course that all important carbon plate. Every shoe manufacturer seems to want to have a carbon plate in their shoes at the moment. It's kind of why I've been testing out the Adidas line at the moment, the Adios 4, and of course the Takumi Sen 6, which I'm really enjoying for those fast paced runs. Watch out, a park run near you very soon. This was never really a shoe where I ever reached significant kind of paces anywhere near my kind of target half marathon pace. I'm not sure whether that was due to the heat over the summer or something, or maybe just the type of training I was doing. But it's certainly a shoe I feel I haven't unlocked all of its potential thus far. If I'm going to consider using any kind of shoe really for the Yeovil Half Marathon, and I'm considering the Blackmore Vale Half Marathon as a bit of a test, well, I've got to make sure I complete that test and I get somewhere near those half marathon target paces that I want to achieve at the Yeovil Half in March. So I think perhaps using this one straight out of the bat without a test run this week would be asking for trouble. I'll be playing with fire. I think I go a little outside my comfort zone. So I intend on utilizing this for a test run at some point this week. Though if you don't try things out, well, you could be missing a trick. You know, this thing could produce some great results for me, sort of untapped potential perhaps. So certainly looking to test the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X out once again this week kind of refresh my memory about it, see if it's a contender, and also the Vaporfly Next Percent Ekaden as well. Both of these need to be tested out. I can say if they're true contenders or not. My only main issue at the moment is out there, it's like a winter wonderland, 
all the pavements are completely covered in ice so it's a bit difficult trying to get those kind of half marathon target pace miles in it's going to be dangerous um, i'm even considering perhaps getting some trail shoes on and hitting one of the uh, grassy fields where i can be sure of the traction there i'll be a little bit more sure-footed and i can just make sure i keep that base mileage up in those slippery conditions i really don't want to chance any injuries right now just before some kind of important races that I've been looking forward to. So which of these shoes do you recommend that Ed Bud utilizes for my Blackmore Vale half marathon? Please let me know down in the comments. I'll be really, really pleased to uh, get you your help and your advice. Without all of you viewers, this channel simply wouldn't exist and I really do appreciate all of you. Thanks for watching through to the end. Please hit that subscribe button, give the video a like, share it with your friends, my name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.